We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up, up. Bring the house down. Got that big space pump and make them bounce now. Flossing like they bossing and the freaks are coming out now. AEW Unrestricted. It's Aubrey Edwards. It's Will Washington. Heck yes. And we've got a big, big week that we're a part of right now. Yes. And, you know, it, this is AEW Unrestricted, but of course we cover the the entire uh, umbrella, and that includes Ring of Honor and Ring of Honor Supercard of Honor. It's coming up this Friday. Yes. WatchROH.com. And this card is just it's shaping insane. up to be something amazing. We've got great matches uh, all across the board. And, you know, we've been talking about this Ring of Honor Women's World Championship match uh, with uh, Athena, your forever Women's World Champion, the greatest ROH Women's World Champion of all time, facing arguably the greatest AEW Women's World Champion of all time in uh, Hikaru Shida, the longest reigning AEW Women's World Champion of all time. And uh, for these two to come together the way that they are, that match just feels like something like I think about All Out last year and when they both uh, there was that uh, six woman tag that was on the the pre show yep and zero when hour. they both yep on the zero hour and when they both got tagged in and the crowd is going nuts just seeing these two and the Who possibility else just sitting of, there making a note in his creative book <laughs> like yes we will need to revisit this <laughs> yes and, and, and it's great and it was uh, and like knowing that. We're getting to do this match now. Supercard of Honor feels like a big deal. But then also, we've got Mark Briscoe versus Eddie Kingston for the ROH World Championship. And this feels like a match that uh, has needed to happen for a very long time. Mark Briscoe was supposed to compete for the championship before, uh, but due to injury, was not able to. And now that he's back, this is his opportunity to claim the ROH World Championship on a very, very significant anniversary because... It was, I believe, 11 years ago that Jay Briscoe won the ROH World Championship. So he has an incredible opportunity to do the same. We also have for the ROH World Television Championship, Lee Johnson is challenging Kyle Fletcher. This is going to be good. This is going to be very good. I think that Lee Johnson has been on quite a roll in Ring of Honor pretty much. Uh, the last match he lost was to Christopher Daniels, and pretty much since then he has just been on this incredible run of wins. He has earned himself an opportunity to face Kyle Fletcher, and this is an exciting opportunity to see if Lee Johnson can step up. But like Kyle Fletcher is no slouch, right? Kyle Fletcher is, I think, one of the best guys we have in the ring. Period. Kyle Fletcher is a banger factory. Like he is. <laughs> He's so good. Like, this whole show is stacked. And one of the things I love about Ring of Honor is just seeing, like, just to put my own boys over for a second, like, the ref team has been killing it. Like, I am very happy that I get to sit at my couch at home and enjoy this as a fan because I get to see all of my wonderful boys that normally work Ring of Honor, plus Paul Turner, uh, Ring of Honor veteran at this point, legend in my mind. They're all going to be killing it in Philly, and I could not be more proud of everybody. Like, it's, it's one of the things that we are great at, both AEW and Ring of Honor, is that when you know there is a pay-per-view, you know you are in for a good time. Like, it is well worth the money. It's going to be awesome. Watch ROH.com. Like, you will not be disappointed. I agree. And, you know, it's funny that I just brought up the uh, ROH World Television Championship and, you know, the, the incredible match that we've got coming up there. But on the other side of that, we're introducing another World Television Championship. And we talked last week to one of the participants who has made it to the finals of that very match coming up. Uh, We talked to Queen Aminata last week, and she's going to be one of the participants in the ROH Women's World Television title match at Supercard of Honor. But our guest on this show here is the other participant in this match. Who do we have today, Aubrey? Today... On Unrestricted, we are joined by, uh, I feel like I say this all the time, like one of my favorite people, but like legitimately like Billy Starks is one of my favorite people because not only is she incredible, but she has had this like monumental rise in such a short time. And then considering I'm like, like twice the age of her almost, <laughs> I'm like the, the sky is the limit. So I am, I am so happy you're here with us today, Billy. Thank you so much for joining us today on Unrestricted. Thanks for having me guys. So you first made your AEW debut, I think on dark it was shortly after you turned 18 in a match with red velvet. Yeah. It was like the week after I turned 18. So how did that all come together? So 
I reached out to Sean Dean when I was like 17, just on an email, because I was like, screw it. Let's see what, what happens, because they run in Indiana sometimes, and Indiana is lawless. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Sean sent me an email back being like, I already know who you are. Just hit me up when you turn 18, blah, blah, blah. Like, we'll definitely stay in contact with you and then i turned 18 and i said sean i'm here when's the next show you can get me on and he was like oh wednesday you free i was like of course i'll be there (laughs) right attitude yeah no and and that's great and like you know at that time you had already generated so much buzz more buzz than most people i just came back from like japan and then i was like still doing school and stuff and it was crazy because, like, I flew down to dark and I was still filming, like, the Life of documentary thing. So I was getting a lot of, like, clips of my first experience of doing a lot of TV in, like, a different world to me. And then also going and traveling to Japan for the first time was crazy. And then me and Sky Blue in the, uh, the hotel room just being misfits before we had to go to the airport. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because... Despite the fact that as far as to the TV audience, to the AEW audience and the Ring of Honor audience, you're fairly newer. You've, again, been doing this a very long time and you've come up and known a lot of these people forever. It feels like every time I'm around you, uh, everybody in the locker room is almost they, they almost view you as I, I don't want to say like daughter but almost like the little niece right like everybody's always looking out for you i joke that i'm like the little sister of pro wrestling somehow and i i I don't know how i ended up (laughs) in this role (laughs) no it's great though it's it's great to to see that kind of everybody looks out for you in a way and is almost rooting for you in a way where again like i said you've been doing this a very very long time and yet you're still just scratching the surface and that i think I think people listening to this will gather that youth is going to be a big topic of this podcast because it it is something that uh, is very unique to exactly who you are. We're sitting here with Billy Starks, who, by the way, 19 years old, you're still in the early stages of your career, despite what you've already accomplished. I completely agree with you. (laughs) It's wild because it's like you have to have that ability to hustle when you're in wrestling, I think to be successful, whether like however many, many years you were on the Indies versus how many years you weren't like, even when you get to TV, there's that element of hustling. And then to hear things like Billy had a 4.0 GPA and then she's at TV and she's like, Oh yeah, I got prom this weekend. And I'm like, (laughs) not only is she like hustling at being a professional wrestler on television, but she's hustling at living like her best life, finishing out high school. And then now you're also in college and you're studying. Yeah. And you just like, you don't stop. And I I love it. (laughs) But as like, uh, like an older sister, like I'd say much other people in the locker room kind of see it as like, please don't burn out. Like you're wonderful. Stop. (laughs) I feel like I'm doing so much less than I was like doing in high school. And everybody jokes like, no, you're doing great. Just chill out. You've done so much. Like, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a good job. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm itching for just a little bit more. Maybe I need to do like 200 matches a year. That's what my goal is. And they're like, not with college. That's a terrible idea. No, you got to <laughs> you gotta have that solid backup plan. I think like both like I see Will as the father, like his eyes are just like, yes, like, yes, no. do the college. <laughs> do the college. <laughs> so it's it's OK that it feels like a little bit less because at this point in your life like the thing is like high school is so kind of generalized and it's like you got to take in a little bit of everything whereas like this college time period is a little more focused yeah and that's that's okay you know what i want to talk about though i want to talk about battle of the belts six yes because battle of the belt six you challenged jade cargill for the tbs championship first off When did you find out about this match? I think I found out like a week or two before. Like it was very last minute. And I did, I think like nine matches before that match. Like it was a lot of matches before that. And then before I got to the venue, it was my first time ever getting on an Amtrak or a train. And I got off at my first stop like I was supposed to, got on the next train, fell asleep on that train and missed my stop. And then was lost on the train trying to get back to (laughs) where I needed to be for Battle of the Belts. And then I got there and was like, okay, I guess I had to wrestle this monster now. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, it was it was really great having Billy walk in. It's like, wait, weren't you just like doing 12 matches yesterday or something? And now you're on a train and you're here. And I've made it. <laughs> that hustling attitude that we talked about. It's just like it's just become a regular thing that we're used to. But I loved that day because it was and we were talking about this a little bit before we started recording, but it was a great example of being thrown into the fire. Like it's Battle of the Belts. It's this huge match. You've got Jay Cargill, title match, all this stuff. And at one point we're talking about stuff and you just go, how do commercials work? <laughs> I go, okay, so here's kind of what's going to happen. And then here's the information that I tell you. And blah, blah. I'm like, oh my God, like <laughs> you're competing for a title on TV and you've never had to deal with a commercial, which for the people listening, maybe you just like, it, it's, it's one of those like behind the scenes things. But when you've never wrestled with the idea of commercials, it suddenly changes kind of how everything is mapped out. And now you're worried like, okay, where does heat start? Where does this happen? Like, oh, there's cameras. Like it, it kind of changes how you approach matches. Was that the first time you had been handed times and there were three of them? So it came as one, but then they we were the like, hybrids, but there's so it was even breaks. Worse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we had the and I was like, yeah. there's breaks. I don't understand what you mean. I just go in a match. I don't understand what you mean stop. <laughs> oh, sweet summer child. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I can just imagine being told for the first time, and I hear this all the time from people of, you know, they, they've wrestled their, you know, oh, you're a lot of 10 minutes, whatever. But when, you know, of course, you're working in the world of TV, they hand it to you in the form of, and let me see, that match went, what, eight and a half? So Yeah, I think it was like a three, two, two. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like a three, two, 30 and two, 30. But the two, 30 <laughs> was actually a hybrid. So we had one of the full black and it was live. So yeah, it's <laughs> really thrown into the fire. <laughs> wow. I, I hadn't even considered that that was the first time your title match with Jade was the first time you had worked a television and a live TV match at that, right? Was, was mm -hmm. that show live? I think it was live. Yeah, it was. Because uh, that was the one that aired right after the rampage. But yeah, so again, just the thrown to the fire. Um, again, were, were you nervous? What was the, the feeling like for you that entire day? I honestly was just excited. I'm one of those people like I just get locked in and I'm ready for a match. And I feel like the w weekend like building up to it, I was very excited just because I had so much momentum building up to it. And I don't know, I never like first time opponents to me and that was the first time I ever got to share the ring with Jade it's always special to me because it's like oh you get to have a first time match and it was a big time match feel off the start so I knew it was going to be fun. So how shortly after that match did it become official that you joined AEW? I don't know it never really got announced and then everybody was like oh she's just part of this now this is awesome <laughs> and I was like cool everybody I think just caught on <laughs> but I officially joined, uh, I think, August. Yes, August. My brain. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, so that, that was, was like months before. Wacky. Yeah, that was uh, that was a while before. So you had, were kind of already. We were just kind of sitting on it. Yeah, Ooh. it was kind of weird. <laughs> I was just like, ah, I'll keep doing my thing and see what happens. <laughs> well, we've got a lot more to talk about. We've we've got so much to go because there's uh, there's a lot more Ring of Honor and so much of your career to talk about. And we're going to be doing it right here when AEW Unrestricted continues. AEW Unrestricted, it's Aubrey and Will, and we're talking with the one and only Billy Starks. And we're talking about her start here in AEW and start with Ring of Honor. But I want to ask you about the Owen Hart Foundation Tournament last year. Um, because in that tournament, you got to take on somebody that you eventually became very, very familiar with. And has almost become a big part of your career. But it was your first time getting to kind of tangle it up with Athena. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to start with... Was that the first time you guys had worked together? Yeah, that was the first time we ever got to like face off in the ring. Uh, we talked backstage maybe once or twice before this, but that was the first time we ever like truly fought each other. Um, and I learned from the start that she was very, very hard hitting. <laughs> you you can watch the match back but there's one point where you see me grab the ref to protect me and it was because she kicked me so hard in the ribs that i couldn't breathe at all <laughs> <laughs> yeah and of course again i brought all that up to talk about the fact that this led to one of the biggest stories to take place in ring of honor last year which yes. was you and athena very big story that went into death before dishonor last year 
and was that death before dishonor final battle sorry yes <laughs> went in a final battle something wrong what I, I, I corrected it in my own brain because i was like no, that's fair death Wait, before that's Dishonor. Right. I, was, I was like death <laughs> before fair. dishonor was willow and then uh we'll check the tape okay he was correct <laughs> continue <laughs> yes <laughs> no but uh it led into final battle last year which that was in garland texas that much i do remember uh <laughs> and uh, the huge night for you. But again, that had one of the most tremendous builds we had had in Ring of Honor up until that point. I want to talk about how some of that came together with you and uh, Lexi Nair. You know, we had Lexi Nair on the show. She's talked about that being some of the most fun she's had uh, in everything she's done in her five years with AEW. But you kind of got introduced into all of that. What was, uh, first off, how did that idea even come together? How was that presented to you? It was just- honestly just jokes like we just kept making jokes and things just evolved uh more and more and it started with me and athena just texting back and forth and then it became um me lexi and athena made a group chat just talking about like oh we should make t-shirts we need to do this and we just committed fully into it and then in 2024 we want to make it even crazier and bigger um i have a crazy surprise for the collision that's taking place in canada oh my god where aubrey's already at i think it's going to be a fun surprise for the locker room and the fans that are going to be there at the show and i hope to do more stuff like this i'm so stoked that's my favorite part of wrestling is like when other wrestlers are trying to like make it fun for other people on the show like because that's that's what's fun about it right like it's the surprises and it's the you don't know where things are going to go like yeah my whole favorite part of this uh storyline was one of like the the culmination moments of the minion graduation where literally everyone is like uh billy is the valedictorian and then they name lexi and everyone immediately like i know i did so I, i'm speaking for everyone here everyone looks at your face and you're just like <laughs> I was just a little shocked. <laughs> right. Just a smidge. Just a smidge. But yeah, like, how do you not like lose, like, just lose yourself in that moment and just start laughing? <laughs> I feel like uh Ream Honor has put me in the position where I get to be the biggest goofball. But at the same time, it is so hard not to laugh sometimes at like the little bits we get to do. Cause it's truly like us just having fun together. Like we just click as people and we're friends in and out outside of wrestling so when we get to work together work is fun <laughs> uh well the good news is uh i actually cannot wait to see what this ends up being like obviously i work in creative i know a little bit of i know the segment but i don't actually you know pretending what... like you don't know <laughs> no i, I don't i, 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 I don't, don't know the... nothing i know yet, I, I, all i know is the segment i don't know exactly what you're going to do in it i have so much much shenanigans planned. <laughs> oh my god i'm so stoked <laughs> uh no i'm excited and the, the cool thing is with this show dropping on a thursday everybody's going to be seeing this for the first time literally today uh so Definitely check that out on Honor Club. Tonight. And uh, speaking of Honor Club, this Friday on Honor Club, uh, you are going to be challenging. I, I, it's not even the challenge because at this point, there's there has not been a champion yet. First ever. First ever. First ever. Ring of Honor World Television Championship. The tournament has led down to you and our previous guest here on the show, Queen Amanada. And you made it through... Uh, Diamante, you defeated Mercedes Martinez. So uh, I want to talk to you about the significance of this championship. I mean, you were just in the world title match in the main event final battle. And I was in the room when the roster was told about the new championship and you guys were all presented with the new championship. Tell me a little bit about what this means to be a part of the inaugural match for the television championship honestly it just made my eyes light up because i had a goal to strive for i knew there was no chance of me taking the title off athena she is the forever champion she is never losing that title no one has ever taken that title so (laughs) i had a new shiny belt to chase after (laughs) and that officially came my title as soon as i saw it tk handed over now (laughs) (laughs) wow uh, I love this attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I've said it since the beginning of this tournament. It is my title. I want this belt more than anything. I did so much work 
for final battle because I wanted that championship to prove myself. This is my chance to prove myself to everybody. And in Philly, I don't care if Queen thinks she's number one. I'm walking out the champion. It's one of those things where like, I'll be happy if either person wins because I feel like there is just so much, like we're literally watching the future of women's wrestling with you and Queen in this match. And it's really exciting being a woman in wrestling to see what like the both of you have done and what you have done in such a short amount of time as well and knowing like how much more runway you have in all of this like like athena's forever champ but like you could be forever champ like there may not be a second (laughs) women's television champion like ever and uh first and last (laughs) there you go oh man so i mean obviously like main eventing a pay-per-view potentially being first ever champion of something, but you've done a lot of other great things in your five years of wrestling. Like you've won titles all over the world. You've wrestled in, I think it's 29 states, four countries, had over 400 matches. Is there anything that you're like, this was super important to me? And this was like a major turning point or something that just like really spoke to you or like made Billy Starks who she is today. Like what from your short history so far has really like kept in your mind? I feel like there was a lot of pivotal moments for me in wrestling. Um, Definitely my first tour of Japan and getting to experience that, that was a whole new scene for me. And I like, from like the beginning of starting wrestling, I always aspired to Joshi's wrestling. I always respected the craft because I think they're phenomenal and one of the best women's wrestlers, period. So when I finally got to have the experience to go over there and compete with these wrestlers and make relationships and knowing I took three years of Japanese before I got to go, it was great. (laughs) Um, But then when I got over to the UK, I think that was a great experience. I made so many friends and it was just so much fun. I feel like I reconnected with wrestling because like after COVID, it was very hard. I feel like wrestling was not the same. And then, like, being able to start traveling and be around, like, nice and bigger crowds again. It was so much fun. God, I didn't even think about the COVID thing. Like, you've only been working (laughs) for five years and there was a pandemic for, like, half of that. Oh, my God. And I did so many tape shows during the pandemic. It was crazy. And I had a wrestling ring in my garage. So I was literally just training every day because I was bored out of my mind because there was nothing. I was doing like my work on my computer because like you don't have no school. So I'm doing this in my wrestling ring and then just rolling around and going and get lunch. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like a lot of uh, what you were able to get exposed to the world really occurred during the pandemic. It felt like a Mm -hmm. lot of people were really getting to know Billy Starks in those shows. And, you know, we we always talk about it's a conversation we have a lot in, in AEW about how those pandemic days really leveled the playing field. Because when you're dealing with kind of no crowds, everybody is as over as each other, right? Uh, (laughs) And so uh, that kind of gives everybody the opportunity to perform in a way where you didn't have that before, where you you have guys who had all this. You're just performing, (laughs) right? So how much of that do you feel helped you discover who you were as a performer? I feel like it definitely... Uh, made me hone in on a lot of like different things that I didn't focus on before especially when it came to like camera work and like just moving a certain way and like there was so many possibilities because of the pandemic that you got to experiment so much so much more so I feel like I found my identity of like oh what I want to present with like promos or like oh this is a match I have coming up this is the build I kind of want to do for it, even though it is indies like, oh, I have like two or three weeks to build kind of a story with this girl that I know. Right. I I think even when you say like, even if it's indies, that's, I think part of the reason why you're where you are at this point is because you treat it so seriously. You approach it from a perspective of, yeah, sure, this is an indie match, but I'm going to make sure that there's a storyline build. I'm going to make sure that the fans at this show in attendance know that this match matters and why it matters. So I think that's really important and people should uh, you know, walk away with that knowledge. It's really great. So you had mentioned very briefly that 
uh, Indiana is kind of lawless. <laughs> and then I think about like, okay, well, you're 19 now. So you started wrestling you, when you were 13. Yes. Is it difficult to find a wrestling school that's willing to take a 13-year-old? It was not very hard for me, and I was kind of shocked. <laughs> yep, Indiana, all right. I didn't expect right. to start wrestling <laughs> until I was probably like 16. Like I knew a lot of wrestlers who started around that age. And they, like, had told me places because I did photography before I got into pro wrestling. And then I, like, was doing photography at an all-woman show. And I asked the dude, like, ah, you trained so-and-so. Would you train me? And he was like, oh, I know a guy who would train you. And I was like, oh, cool. Introduce me. And then they were like, yeah, we'll train you at 13. And I was like, mom, can I do it? <laughs> And I was signed up the next day and I came after cheerleading practice. <laughs> that is uh, amazing. And, and you, your parents were pretty supportive pretty much from the start. Yeah. So my mom was the one who took me and I did my first class and it was literally like you learned how to roll and like fall down. And I was a cheerleader, so I already knew how to roll. Like that was easy for me. And like even falling down, I was just excited. So the whole time I'm falling down, I'm just smiling, throwing myself. And my mom's like, oh, she's having so much fun. And then my dad got there and he was like, oh, you're not getting her out of the ring. You're stuck. Put your down payment down now. How was that? <laughs> like you, essentially you talk about 13. And so you've, the very next year you start high school and your entire high school run then, you're essentially a pro wrestler. Yeah. And... How? Uh, how? How do you manage that? What what is what is school life like at that point? So technically when I started training, I was in the seventh grade and then I did eighth grade. And eighth grade was when I started to like travel and like try to go to places. And I mainly stayed in the Midwest unless it was like summertime. And then I would be like, oh, let's get crazy. Who's going to book me? I'll drive anywhere. <laughs> I just wanted to knock out all the states. That was always like a thing in my brain of like, oh, by the time I'm 21, I can hit all the states. That's like my internal goal. I don't know if I will hit it. We will see. I feel like I have the chance to. <laughs> Gotta get that Hawaii booking. I know. And Alaska. <laughs> Those are the two I'm shooting for. Those are gonna um, be tricky. <laughs> but it was just kind of came easy to me. Like school was always easy to me. I was a straight A student. And I would be involved in a bunch of after school stuff. And I did cheerleading and cross country and stuff all to like prepare for wrestling. Because in my brain, I was like, oh, I have good cardio. I already know how to do flips and crap. I'll figure it out. <laughs> so when I started wrestling, I feel like I already had my game plan set. So it just was funny how everything kind of just fell into place. Everything eventually leads to wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. You just have to be a nice person and have fun. Oh my God. Like it's so simple. Like just be a nice person and have fun. Oh, the, the amount of times that I wish I could just tell that to people. This is so great. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> We're having a fantastic conversation with Billy Starks, who will be competing this weekend at Supercard of Honor against Queen Aminata for the first ever Ring of Honor World Television Championship. Uh, we've got more to talk about coming up here on AEW Unrestricted. It's Aubrey, it's Will, it's Billy Starks. We're here on AEW Unrestricted. We're talking AEW, we're talking ROH, we're talking high school, we're talking all kinds of stuff because Billy Starks has just had just an incredible journey so far. And I'm just so thrilled to see like, to see the short amount she's been with us and how incredible it's been and just knowing how much more incredible it's going to be and the potential that you have and just the drive, like you've got it. It's just a matter of now we just need time to happen so that we can all enjoy it. So I'm super stoked. Um, so you've mentioned a couple of times you've been to Japan. You really love the Joshi style of wrestling. You've worked with Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. How does an opportunity to come to Japan come up? Like, how, can you tell that story? Honestly, I thought my invitation was fake. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you were getting scammed? How, I thought how? I was getting scammed. I was like, oh, this is like a junk email. Somebody's trying to play with me right now. I'm going to get annoyed. Um, <laughs> but I was like clearing out uh, my emails and it says like, oh, from Shota, uh, would you like to come to Japan? Blah, blah, blah. Here's like all this information. And I was like, oh, this ain't real. And I clicked out of it and just kept scrolling and clearing out the rest of my email. But then my mom, my mom at the time would all 
double check all my stuff and make sure I'm actually taking care of it. Good parent. Good parent. <laughs> making sure I'm responsible. She was like, oh, this is Japan. Like, they're for real. And she was like, this is real. I was like, huh? Are you sure? She was like, yeah. I was like, I guess I'll go to Japan. And then we started doing the whole conversation. And I figured out that the first trip I went on was 10 days and I think I did three matches and I got to like train. I went to Tokyo Disney. I had so much fun. I got uh, yelled at by the police. <laughs> what did you do? It was an accident. <laughs> uh, I, don't, yeah, I don't know what I did. I like you got hands in the air like, hey. <laughs> I don't know I... what I did. But I was walking by like my hotel area and I was in Shibuya and I walked past I think it was like a government building and they had security like guards near like the front entrance and I didn't walk near there. I went behind the building to cut the road to go to like this restaurant area. You're not allowed to walk there. Nope. <laughs> All of the security like comes running to me and I just put my hands up and I was like, I'm American. <laughs> And they were like, oh, no, uh, see my sin. Like, please move. <laughs> uh, that's great. Um, I, I, what Japanese influences would you say it, it has had the most impact on your style? I don't know. That's very hard for me. I feel like I, I like to just pick and choose from everybody. Um, I feel like everybody has their unique qualities, but there's everything that you can tweak and make it your own. But I feel like there's a lot of inspiration that I take from, like, Miami uh, Toyota. Like, she is phenomenal. I feel like she's always been, like, in my head, this woman was doing drop kicks off the apron. I can hit a swanton every week. I'll be fine. Wow. <laughs> what do you think is the biggest difference between wrestling in Japan and wrestling in America? Definitely, like, the pacing of matches. It's very different to me just because of, like, how the crowd reacts. And I feel like you can build stories in a match without having to do certain things to please the crowd and keep them interested, if that makes sense. Because totally. Japanese wrestling is so respectful that like the whole time they're invested into your match. Yeah, the crowds are just so different. Like I know from I've unfortunately never been to Japan yet, but like watching it on TV, the crowds are just so vastly different. So I can totally see how pacing would be greatly affected by that. I just feel like wrestling is more idolized over there and more respected. While wrestling in the States is like, oh, yes, it's entertainment. But oh, yeah, that's fun. But mm, it's not really my cup of tea. So I want to kind of take this back around to the topic of, of youth. Because, again, we knew this was going to be a big Will part. and I are the old people here. I know, because <laughs> we're freaking old curmudgeons in our 30s over here. Back in my day. So I wanted to ask you, every time I'm around you and another particular young person at work, it makes me feel both old, but like also like... <laughs> I, I get this sense. I get this sense of joy seeing you guys experience this side of pro wrestling for the first time, and that is one Nick Wayne, mm -hmm. because Nick Wayne, of course, you guys were both seen as the young prodigies of this era of professional wrestling. You know, he's uh, just right behind you in terms of age, and you guys breaking in around the same time. You guys were tearing it up on the indies. You were these two young names that everybody wanted to see. And now I, it's being around you guys at work and it's just like, like he's just barely sprouting facial hair. And, uh, <laughs> but it is, but it is fascinating to witness and fascinating to watch you guys. Um, what's it been like kind of being just slightly ahead of him uh, in the AEW experience and, and seeing his growth? Honestly, Nick got a contract before I did. That's true. Uh, he did, yeah. but he didn't get to be here until... Oh, he was. He was backstage. He got to go and, like, shadow behind Darby. That's different. It, I don't it, know. It, I wasn't it, around. Uh, and like, he got to shadow Darby, but until no, he got to have that TV no. match with Swerve. Who wrestled first on TV? Mm, I think me, but that's because he's a You baby. think? I no, think it me. was you. It was, you. it was definitely you. <laughs> he didn't wrestle till July of last year. Oh, that is nuts. But he has been signed for a minute. Yes, he has been. But I feel like we're very much like equals. And Nick has always been one of the people that I always reach out to because we always face similar problems. 
Uh, I joke that he's my therapist, and whenever he needs me, I'll be his therapist, but he usually is the smarter one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He aligned himself with Christian Cage, so he's clearly... He's a dumb boy. Yes. We just have to remember yes. that. I, I'm very book smart. He's not book smart, <laughs> uh, but he's he'll figure smart. it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think we figured out the backstage dynamic between the two youngins now. I get mm-hmm. it. I totally <laughs> get it. Yeah, it was it was really great, like being someone on the inside and watching kind of what happens on the indies and you, you, you like know the names that are being said, like had Sean Dean had said like, Oh yeah, no, I know who you are. Like we kind of keep track. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us had kind of been looking at the calendar going, okay, are Billy Starks and Nick Wayne 18 yet? And we just, how long is it it going to be? Like, is it like, eh, eh, no, not this week. Everybody said they thought I was 18 for like four years. I was like, yeah, sorry guys. (laughs) Yeah, no, we pretty much did. Like you were, you're already like more responsible and more uh, mature than most people that I knew at your age back when I was, back when I was your age. So yeah, no, it's, Mm -hmm. you're doing it right. I really appreciate it. It's really great. So you're you're in college, but like, what the hell are you studying? <laughs> um, I'm doing business and marketing. Uh, right now, I am just knocking out an associate's degree. I'm I think I'm like fifty six percent done after this semester. What the hell, woman? What? Do you sleep? I sleep all the time. I slept twelve hours yesterday. It was amazing. <laughs> I literally feel like I have so much free time. I joke about this. Like I work out, I cook my own food, and then I play video games. I do school, and then I go wrestle. That's all I do with my life. (laughs) What are you playing currently? Oh, I'm a big Call of Duty person, but I'm really hooked on Fortnite right now because of the new season. I really like the, uh, like, what's it called? Like uh, mythology theme? Mythology? Yes, sorry, words. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Yeah, you know what? That actually sounds about right in that Call of Duty and Fortnite specifically sound about where I would think anybody with the amount of kind of go, go, go and drive you have, it's like, okay, when I, if I'm going to sit down, this is what I'm going to play. Yeah, it's just so much fun and like engaging to me. I feel like I need stuff that stimulates me while I'm doing nothing. Because I feel like I'm a very active person, and when I'm at home, I need to relax, but I still need that like stimulation. <laughs> I get it. I mean, it's t- you're not wrong. Like you've got a great head on your shoulders, girl. Like you've freaking <laughs> world is your oyster. I'm like so freaking proud of you, dude. Like, and I'm so happy that like I get to know you, that I get to work with you, that I get to yell numbers at you during commercials. <laughs> Why? Like, <Yeah. laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> this has been really awesome. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. I had fun. Yes, and best of luck tomorrow. Supercard of Honor in Philly against Queen Aminata. We will crown the first ever Ring of Honor World Television Champion. Uh, I'm just so stoked. I have no idea where it's going to go. I'm I'm just like trying to read Will's face. Like, do you know? Do you know yet? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I Will. pay you 20 bucks? <laughs> they don't tell me nothing. I mean, look, uh, I'm not saying nothing. I I will say that I am very much, because the one thing I don't know, again, this contract signing, I have no idea what's going to be happening here. Uh, So I am excited. Uh, I got some plans, Will. (laughs) That is going to be happening tonight on Honor Club, watchroh.com, where you can catch Ring of Honor every Thursday. Uh, You can also catch AEW Dynamite every Wednesday on TBS, AEW Rampage every Friday on TNT, AEW Collision on TNT every Saturday. You can catch new episodes of this podcast every Thursday on all of your favorite podcast platforms. You can also catch video episodes of this very show right here on our YouTube channel every Monday where you can look at our beautiful mugs, especially these two beautiful ladies here. Uh, uh, but checks in the mail. until next time, <laughs> I'm Bo Washington. She is Aubrey Edwards. This is our guest, Billy Starks. We will Yay. see you next time. Have a great day. Peace. Bye. Come on, throw your hands up. Let me see you. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gonna turn it